I'm going to take an hour and a half to unbox it. I'll show you all the little pieces, every single piece of paper that came in the box. And that's not what we do here at DIY Guy 123. We're going to get right to it and I'm going to show you how to use the tool to fix your stuff. All right, so let's get into the beast and get this scanner hooked up. I've got it in the car, I've got it connected to the OBD2 port. It's pretty dark in here, but it won't matter and you're gonna see why in just a second. Okay, so I've got the connector plugged into the OBD2 port and the tool is turned on and I'm gonna show you all of the settings. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the recording settings. So you press this button on the bottom right and it starts to record the screen. So everything we're gonna see on the screen is being recorded. The first thing I'll do now is review these buttons with you. So wherever you are in the tablet, no matter what screen you're in, this button right here brings back the Xtool application for diagnostics. So that's what the little car is for. We have volume up, we have volume down, we have the home button, which brings you to the home screen of the tablet. From here, you can see a web browser, a file, explorer and a an album so any of your stored photos are going to be in here and we'll come back to that in a minute and then settings for the tablet are here the only thing i messed with was the wi-fi settings bluetooth and what, what else i set the time zone down near the bottom so not a lot of work in there and then this button right here is the print screen button so when you click that it takes a print screen of no matter what you're looking for um, so we'll do another one right here there you go. And so since it's still recording, I will stop the recording and show you where to look for that. So if we go back to the home and we go to the albums and we should see a screenshot. And this is the first screenshot I took. And there's the second one that I took. So those are screenshots. And then under screen records, here is the screen recording that we just made together. And we scroll to the end. So yeah, so that's the first recording. Next in this segment, we will look at the features of the actual scanner tool application. And in the more function, you can go in there to get a link to the customer or the product website for Xtool. It'll show you details on this scanner and every other product they have. Under the settings, we have the English language setting for this tool, units, whether you want imperial or metric, workshop information, it shows you details about your uh your your shop your address etc that go on the top of canned reports which are really nice i'll show you later and then it talks about the firmware and the application version so that's information that's useful if you're troubleshooting with x tool and so they may ask you for that type of information next is the updates button and i'm out of wi-fi range so you can't see that uh, that uh, there are any updates it's not able to check uh, i keep this thing pretty up to date but i have a very detailed video on how to perform updates on most x tool products uh, with this type of interface on the top right you see the battery level indicator it's currently at 100 percent. it's been charging for a while and you also see the green lightning bolt which shows that it's currently receiving power it's receiving power through the obd2 port some people don't know that the obd2 port does supply power to the scan tool so that's that's really nice Next is the remote control feature. And if you want someone else to remotely see your screen and help you, you know, diagnose something, if you click on remote control, it gives you a link that you can send to someone else. And as long as this is on the internet and they're on the internet, they can remotely see your screen. It's a pretty cool feature. And I used it one time when I was trying to diagnose something and I didn't really understand what I was seeing. And I shared my screen with a friend and he helped me out. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to read codes and set codes and do things interacting with the computer. So I have the key in the on position. It's usually easier to go into auto scan. An auto scan will automatically detect the VIN and what car you have and what features you have. If that doesn't work, you can go into the diagnosis function and it will tell you um, specifically what features are you know compatible with your vehicle. So generally I just do auto scan and it connects with the vehicle's computer and we'll show you the vehicle and the VIN and um, it shows you that information pretty quickly. And then once you get into this section, uh, you can automatically scan all modules. You can specifically test 
certain modules. So if you know you want to do something with the engine, you can click the powertrain control module and it will show you codes related to just that module. You can read codes and clear codes and look at live data. Uh, you know, I'm monitoring battery voltage right now. I've had this key on for a long time and it's now down to eight volts. And so you can see how that battery voltage is fluctuating. Here's another example, position of brake pedal off and a brake pressure applied. I'm gonna press the brake pedal real quick on off. And so you can see that live data as well. You're able to graph things. Uh, you can graph multiple, um, multiple details at the same time. And so let's just pick a uh, positive voltage of the battery, for example. And you can pick, uh, let's see, you can select several of them and click record. And that will start recording those specific parameters. And then when you hit the button again, it stops recording them. And I'll show you where to find that in a minute. You can look at a graph of data. There's eight volts and here's a gauge showing the eight volts. So different representations for data. Uh, you can also go through an automatic scan and this scans all modules of the car and it's going to have a lot of failures now where the voltage is so low. It's on a charger, but I only have two amp charger with me right now. So uh, it's not, uh, not charging it very quickly. So yeah, it's scanning all modules of the computer, uh, in, in all, all of the modules in the car. Uh, there are 15 in this car and it's finding all kinds of failures. And so this is, you can either diagnose an individual section, ABS, restraint control module, et cetera, body control module. You can diagnose an individual one and you can, so let's do that. So it will show you the read the trouble code for body control module. Oh, no trouble code found. Let's try uh, instrument panel control module, diagnose, read the trouble code. I just wanna show you a bunch of codes. Yeah, so there we go. So battery voltage, you know, it's got a ba battery voltage problem and target identifier of passive anti-theft system. So a couple of issues there with that particular module. What is nice about this is you can generate a DTC report and this is all of the DTCs that are set in this vehicle. And it, um, it show, by, by clicking that button and then hitting the back button, it saves a report that I'm gonna show you in a minute. So that's automatic scan. If this doesn't work, you can always go in and enter the VIN manually. Next, I'm going to go into report and I'll show you on the diagnosis report. This is the one that we just created and it shows all the modules and all of the uh, live data associated with it. Wow, it's a long report. Um, usually this just has a listing of the, AB, or of the, of the DTCs for each module. So you can share this report by email or you can print it out. It's a really nice PDF display. Um, also data playback when we recorded some frames there. Um, this was the detail that had been recorded. I recorded eight frames and you can play it back frame by frame by frame. And so that's the data playback. Uh, file manager is not really of interest. It just sh shows the file system that is not that uh, not that useful to the average user. So, all right, so now I'm going to review the special functions, and the special functions are what set this product apart from other products. This special function menu talks about all the items where are more advanced diagnostics. Uh, the the computer this this code reader will interface with the computer at a different level. It will read different types of data, and it will set different types of data. I'm going to talk about each of the features very quickly. I'm not going to demonstrate them all. It would take hours. But if you're wondering, you know, basically what are some of these features? I didn't know what some of them were. I still don't. I guess some of them I'm still learning about but it might help you understand the capabilities of this box. So the instrument cluster. This one is very helpful if you have a problem with one of your gauges not working. Let's say your engine is hot, you know it's hot, your temperature gauge hasn't moved off of cold, you're wondering whether the gauge is broken or whether the temperature sensor is broken. Well, you can use this feature to tell the gauge to go to any position. 
that is uh, controllable by the computer. So if you tell the gauge, hey, I want it to go to full hot and the gauge moves to full hot, you know the gauge is fine and the computer is fine. But if you tell the gauge to go to full hot and it doesn't move, the gauge is bad. Generally, it's either the gauge or the sensor or a wiring issue, but that would be less common. Key programming. This is very helpful if you have a key that is not like a key fob, but you need to program the computer to accept a smart key. If you have a key that has a key fob with buttons on it that has RF capabilities to remote start and remote pop the trunk, you need another module to plug into this scanner, and I'm going to be looking into that. Power balance is very helpful if you have a rough running engine and you want to take one cylinder out of the equation at a time, one at a time, so it cuts air and or, sorry, it cuts ignition and or fuel to one cylinder. And if your engine runs rough when you do that, then you know that that cylinder was contributing. But if your engine didn't change the sound and it's idling just the same, then you know that that cylinder wasn't working properly. Language change would be for the vehicle, uh, I think, for the vehicle dash display if you want to change it to a different language. Transport mode is interesting. I didn't know what that was and looked it up. If a vehicle is manufactured from the factory, it often takes weeks or months to get to the dealer, and in that time, the battery can drain. So using transport mode, you can disconnect the battery from the electrical drains. Uh, it's not like a physical cable disconnect. It's somehow, logically, it shuts the computer modules all down so they stop draining power. TPMS reset. So the tire pressure monitoring system, if you rotate your tires, that might need to be, you might need to reset your computer for that. Or if you get a different set of wheels with extra sensors, different sensors, you may need to program your computer for that. AF reset, I assume that's air fuel ratio, but I'm not certain if that's really what that is. Um, I don't know. Shows a gear. Not sure. High voltage battery would be relevant for any electric vehicle. Gearbox matching and gear learning basically help program the vehicle's computer to shift gears more efficiently. Steering angle sensor, that is a very useful tool to recalibrate the steering. So cars with stability control that want to know, if the computer of the car wants to know where you have the steering wheel pointed, the computer will try to help you go in that direction. And it will do that by either cutting power to wheels or applying brakes to wheels. And the computer actually has the ability to steer the car regardless of where the wheels are pointed. So if it jams the brakes on the driver's side, you're going to turn likely to the left. If it jams them on the passenger side, you're likely going to turn to the right, regardless of where the steering wheel is pointed. So if you're, if you change the steering rack or tie rod ends, or get the vehicle realigned and your steering angle sensor is not calibrated to where your steering wheel is, then you have you kind of are defeating the purpose of the stability control. Oil reset is required when you have a modern vehicle that tells you when the capacity of the oil life has been fully used up and you want to confirm that, uh, oh, hey, I've just changed the oil. I want the capacity set back to 100%. Most vehicles, there's a way to do it without using a scan tool but it's kind of hokey. You you have to turn the get key on and not start it, press the gas pedal three times, turn your headlights on and off twice, clap your hands half a dozen times. And, you know, there's this weird procedure that different manufacturers make you go through. It's nice to have one tool that will do it all. Electronic parking brake calibration is required if you change your rear pads and you need to calibrate how close they will come in to grip when your parking brake, brake is applied. Headlight would likely be for headlight calibration and for possibly troubleshooting of actual headlights, but uh, most likely calibration and angling and so on. Um, electronic pump activation. It looks like there's a turbo there, but maybe that's for a, a fuel pump. I'm not sure. A lot of suspensions have active components, sensors, um, airbags, stuff like that. Any kind of calibration would be done in that special function. Seat matching. I have a detailed video showing what this is used for and how to how to calibrate your seat so that your airbag goes off appropriately and your seat belt, uh, you know, your seat belt fasten sign is accurate when you do where you do not have a passenger. EEPROM and ECU configurations. These are getting into advanced functions. If you take a computer from another vehicle and put it in this vehicle, or you take certain modules from another vehicle and put them in this module, and they're not all compatible, you can restore compatibility using those functions. There are many, many other things you can do in there. BMS is the battery monitoring system. And some vehicles, when you change the battery, you have to go in and reset the BMS system. Throttle position sensor is uh, obvious. Uh, diesel particulate filter. This is an option in modern diesel engines to help control emissions. And sometimes that needs calibration and, uh, and testing. 
if you bleed your brakes and air should happen to get into your brake line somehow, maybe you blew a brake line and you've repaired it, but you are wanting to bleed the brakes, the ABS module might need to be cycled and that's where you would do it. Automatic start stop could need calibration. Same thing with the EGR, the exhaust gas recirculation valve could need calibration. Same thing with AC. The window initialization, I've used this before. So sometimes you press the window and the button, like hold the button and the window goes down and hold the window button and the window goes up. But other ty other types of vehicles, they, that works as well. But in addition, you can press the button quickly and the window will go down and press the button quickly and the window goes up. That part of the function requires calibration. And so I've had to do that on, Honda, on a Honda Pilot. Uh, variable gate turbo relearn. There's some other name for that type of turbo as well. And this is basically calibrating that type of turbo. Injector coding. When you change an injector, you in some vehicles need to tell the computer that, hey, there's been a new injector added and here's the serial number. And basically you need to tell the computer how to use that injector. If the airbags have been blown out of the car and you replace them, I'm pretty sure that you need to tell the computer that you've done so. So that's that. And then tire upgrade. Well, if you change your wheels, I think you need to tell the computer that you've changed them so that the computer understands, hey, there's a different diameter of wheel, possibly to calibrate your speedometer, possibly to handle with stability and traction control. So those are all the special features. If you want technical support, you can click the technical support text right there and it brings up two email addresses. So yeah, that's pretty convenient. I have worked with the technical support team and they are very cooperative and very supportive. I reported an issue that I noticed with the product and then shortly afterwards there was an update released like within days and I think their, their support is excellent. Last thing I'm going to show you is the difference between the D7 and the IP819. When you plug the D7 into a computer using the USB cable, you get a pop-up on the top, or maybe it's on the bottom, that asks you if you want to share files with the computer. I thought the IP819 was broken when it wasn't automatically popping up, but what I've learned is that after you connect your USB cable to the computer, you have to take your finger and swipe down like that, and then you'll expose this menu, USB connected. So when you do select that, it'll ask you to turn on USB storage, and then once you do that, it um, will pop up on your computer as an, a regular computer storage drive. When you want to download your files, you can look at screen recordings. These are the screen recordings that we took together. And then you can click on screenshots and you can copy them just like a USB drive. So you can copy the folders if you want or the individual files. So hopefully this video shows you all of the features. One thing I would say is that there's no scanner out there that works with all vehicles. If you have a specific vehicle with a specific problem, you're trying to troubleshoot and that's the reason why you're buying a scanner, go on their website because they list the compatibility on each of the product pages. And there are hundreds or thousands of pages of lists of compatibility features. So check that and make sure that your vehicle is on the list. Then you will know it's compatible with your vehicle. All right, well, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Good luck with your do-it-yourself project.